Thank you for having me on API Days. My name is James, and I am from GovTech Singapore. Right. Uh, I am actually a solutions, a lead solutions architect uh, with the trusted data division of our Singapore National Digital Identity Program. Right. So today I'm just going to talk to you about our journey and how uh, in GovTech we took this journey to, you know, enable our uh, personal data to be shared over APIs in a secure fashion, and thus, you know, we started from within the government, and then we moved on to the private sector. So I'm hoping you find some of this information uh, useful. Okay? Right. If my computer can work with me here. Right, right. Yeah, we're back in business. Okay. Right, so what is digital, national digital identity? Right, in national digital identity in Singapore, uh, it is the cornerstone, it's one of the pillars of our Smart Nation initiative. And it's the basis of everything, you know, that we want to do as Smart Nation, right? And uh, what we're trying to do here is we're trying to provide a unique digital identity for every Singapore citizen and every resident in Singapore for them to transact, for them to do business, for them to uh, get on with everyday life, right? For the citizen, what happens is that there are no passwords, there are no multiple passwords to deal with, no multiple dongles, you know, you have, you know, one from DBS, you have those keychains full of dongles, DBS, uh, Stanchat, and all those other banking uh, dongles. So we want to unify all that and provide a single digital identity for the individual, right? And also, we want to you know, encourage the economy to grow by providing presenceless and paperless interaction. Okay? Okay. I need... Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. So, in uh, the digital identity, there are three aspects of it. First is your identity. Who are you exactly? We need to establish that. We need to establish that without repudiation. Right? Second is authorization. Do you have the authority to access certain services? The third is consent. Do you allow us to share your data, your profile, to another third party service? Okay? And part of that is. Right. Apologies, technology sometimes doesn't really work really well. All right, and uh, as part of that, we've actually uh, formulated the NDI stack, and the NDI stack is divided into four different layers. So it starts from the bottom, the trusted data layer, then above that, the trusted identity, then above that, the trusted access, and then trusted services. Right. So what is what are the four different layers? All right. Okay. All right. Just gonna. Somebody can help me here. Yeah, thanks. Right. So, right, the trusted data layer is made up of uh, my info, which is your personal digital profile. All your data is there, it is uh, stored in a federated manner and then brought uh, together when you transact on demand, right? Above that is the trusted identity layer, which we have our national uh, certification authority that we are rolling out as we speak, and we're issuing a digital identity to every single individual, right? It is issued free to all citizens and for uh, public, is to be used for public and private sector services, okay? Right, next. Uh, no. I'm not done yet. My info. Uh, no. It's a yeah. Can you go back one slide? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Right, so trusted access and trusted services are stuff that we built on top of that to allow a multi factor, multi prong authentication to access the services. The services layer on the top is very important because those are the services that we develop together in partnership with you guys, with all of you who are developing your own apps for banking, for 
all the different uh, digital services that is being provided to the individuals, to the citizens themselves. So I just want to give a quick intro uh, with this video about what is my info. My info. It's a service for all Singaporeans and PRs that prefills forms for you. Anyone with a SingPass account can use this time-saving feature. Your verified data is crafted into your own digital user profile. Once you authenticate yourself with SingPass, you can use your digital profile across a wide range of services. Just confirm your data and you're good to go. This means no more same old boring questions and no more repeated document submissions. So here's to life made so much easier. Any service requiring sensitive information such as your finances will prompt you for your permission. You can also use my info for private sector services like banking. Rest assured that your data will only be released with your permission. Life is too short to fill up long forms. So take your next step towards a national digital identity and use my info today. All right, that's just a quick introduction of what is my info. And uh, I want to, next slide please. I want to share a little bit about our journey so far, how did my info come uh, to being and what did we do along the last three years of our journey, right? So from January 2016, we actually launched the my info service, you know, and when we started it out, we actually wanted to really improve the efficiency of the government digital services. So we are hearing that, you know, from citizens, it's like you have to fill up the same thing all over again and again when you go to every single different government digital service. So basically that was set out to address this problem, this problem statement, right? So when we released my info in 2016, uh, it was uh, so successful that, uh, you know, the banking sector, MAS, uh, learned about it and said, you know, why don't we start something, start, start a pilot with some of the banks. So we did that in the middle of 2017 with uh, a few banks and then we started the, this uh, journey with them, right? So uh, it was also very successful. And in uh, November 2017, we actually decided to build and launch our own developer portal. So in the developer portal, we actually you know, wanted to build a community of developers, right? That would be able to integrate uh, with Mindful APIs, you know, with a simple uh, REST OAuth approach, right? And uh, it was, so successful in December when we rolled out our ability for uh, partners to log in with CopPass and submit a request say, I want my app to be integrated with my info, to use my info data. Uh, immediately on the next day, we had our first request submitted already. Right? So it was that uh, overwhelmingly successful, but it's a good problem. Right? So uh, fast forward to March. 2018, we actually simplified the onboarding process with uh, the partners so that the apps can be provisioned quicker, faster, and at a more automated uh, scale, right? And uh, in October 2018, we relaunched our partner portal as NDI API portal. So this is in conjunction with uh, the October Stack, GovTech Stack Developer Conference that we held our inaugural Stack Conference. Right, and uh, we had a lot of developers, a lot of uh, developers who came up, uh, attended our workshops, and uh, asking questions. Right, and uh, it was really, really very successful. I'll give you some numbers uh, later, you know, to give you a scale of, uh, give you a sense of the scale, you know, that uh, we grew at. Next slide. Yeah. So a uh, quick look at uh, how does the customer experience their journey when using an app integrated with my info. So the first step is, you know, you, you know, flip up your phone, you know, access one of the digital services. This example is from DBS. And you say, I want to apply for the multiplier uh, bank account, right? So next, uh, you say, I want to retrieve my data using my info. And then you'll be taken to a login screen, a SingPass login screen. All right, and then after successful login, you'll be presented with a consent page saying 
DBS wants your data to open a bank account for you. Do you consent or not? So you say, I agree. And the data flows to DBS on the back end. And you know, your application is successfully submitted. So with this process, actually, we eliminate the need for, um, for uh, citizens, for users, to submit hard copy forms, hard copy uh, identification documents. And your uh, tax filing uh, forms and your CPF contributions, you don't have to print all that out anymore, scan them and email them to some banker who will print them out and leave it at, on their desk. So we feel that it is a more secure way uh, to, do, uh, to open bank accounts, right? So now these services are actually available in various banks, as you can see. Okay, and uh, next slide, please. So one, uh, a few of the interesting stuff uh, that happened as a result of that is uh, working with MAS and all that, they managed, the banks managed to streamline the approval process uh, dramatically. So you can see that the, uh, OU, UOB actually uh, launched a 15-minute car loan approval process, meaning that you could go to the showroom, say, I want to test drive this car. And then you know, when I uh, you know, enable, uh, start the application using my info, and I take the car out for a test drive, the moment I'm back from a test drive, if I like the car, I can drive the car off immediately because my car loan has been approved, right? So next slide. Uh, we also have um, instant bank account opening digital services that pop up from uh, banks like OCBC. So OCBC introduced their 360 application, bank application account. And um, you can actually, within uh, about five minutes, you know, uh, getting through uh, the login and the MyInfo process, you're able to get your bank account approved immediately. And you can see over here, that is your bank account that you can use immediately to transact. So we are hearing from OCBC that they have three times more accounts open digitally since they started using my info. They have, out of those people who, you know, transact digitally, open their bank accounts digitally, 90% of them opt to use my info for the convenience. And then they have actually achieved 20% more operational efficiency by using my info because they don't, they no longer have to work with, you know, dirty data, data entry errors and all that. So it's actually saved the bank quite a lot of money. All right, so uh, to date, uh, as of April, right, we have, um, this is just the private sector alone. We have 163 services that has gone live with us, integrated with my info. Out of those, 78 of them offer some form of instant account, instant uh, approval service, right? And uh, we also have uh, many more services from 104 partners who either already have services live with us or um, they are in the process of getting approved, right? So um, quite a good growth, right? For those of you who are interested, you can uh, scan the QR code here to uh, visit our portal. Our portal is easy to remember, www.ndi-api.gov.sg. Right, so in the portal, we actually cater to two uh, audiences. One is the developers. You have a full set of APIs. You have a, a sandbox environment that you can play with. We even have we even um, you know have a demo app that we built in Node.js that you can download from GitHub and get it started and immediately connect. So later, if we have time, I can give you a quick demo. And for the partners, uh, the business people, uh, you are able to log into Copass and then apply for a link up request with my info and then create applications you know that make use of that approved link up request right and uh, innovate you know need to start integrating with your uh, application with my info right so this is uh, how it looks like if you you know when there you should see how it looks like okay if uh, later there's time uh, I will go through right okay some numbers here's a little bit perspective of the scale of growth, right? We have actually uh, over 3 million users in our user uh, base, right? So these are all the people that have SingPass 
enabled in Singapore, right? And all of them have my info profiles, and uh, including government and private digital services, we have more than 325 digital services that are already integrated with my info today. And our number of verified data has moved, has grown a lot from 40 uh, government verified items to 130 verified items. So we kind of tripled our number of uh, data items that are government verified. This means that there will be more use cases where you can uh, imagine and innovate and uh, help to digitalize you know, the customer journeys for your customers. Okay? So the growth, if you can see, we started in 2016. We had a bit, of a, a bit over 30,000 transactions in a API transactions, right? In 2017, we had like 110,000 uh, API transactions. But in 2018, if you remember the history that I, was, I just shared with you guys, that's when we started the, uh, the pilot with the banks, going to the private sector. Our transaction grew to 10.3 million. So that is a factor of almost 100 times of growth in terms of API transactions alone. Okay? So that speaks of where the industry is going. The industry is moving towards API economy. The industry is moving towards microservices. And uh, you know, it's, the, the growth is just unimaginable. In this uh, year, we are actually projected to probably easily hit 25 million transactions or above, right? depending on growth. Okay? So let's talk about uh, my info data. Okay, today um, we started off with this set of data, which is your personal data, your from your NRIC, your FIN card, you know the Singapore passports, right? We also have the contact details uh, from SingPass, which is the uh, verified uh, email and um, uh, mobile number, right? And then we also have your income statements uh, from IRAS. And I have some IRAS colleagues here as well. Um, CPF, right? Contribution history. We also have some uh, education and employment information from MOM. And then we have uh, family uh, information like marital status and, uh, you know, uh, children birth records. So we actually grown that uh, recently with our third version of our APIs to, um, yeah, this is the additional two times more uh, data that we've been talking about. So that's, this is just a sample, by the way. You can see the full list on the NDI API portal. Okay? And uh, we've actually included the work pass uh, status, the resident type, you know, whether you're a Singapore citizen, permanent resident, or uh, FIN. And then um, the uh, income breakdown. So instead of just having a single accessible income number, we have an income breakdown. So banking sector people will love those you know, to be able to provide more services uh, to the individuals. And then we also have uh, the employers within the last 15 months, according to your CPF records. And uh, we have local registered births, as well as uh, sponsored children, you know, for residency. And then the child uh, life status. All right. Last of all, we have uh, two other uh, categories, which is the vehicle data, the full vehicle lock, lock cards from LTA as well as your public uh, housing uh, uh, information from HDB, your loan status and all that. Okay? So quite a lot of data. This is uh, uh, available in our latest uh, release of APIs that's just released, I think, last week. Okay, next. So coming soon, right? We have something interesting coming soon, which is we wanted to bring uh, the concept of my info from personal data to corporate data as well. So, so we are you know, uh, in the midst of preparing for this. And uh, very soon in the future, you'll be able to do uh, what you can do with my info, but at the company level, right, with CorpPass login. So this means there's a lot more opportunities for SME banking. You know, and uh, I'm sure all of you can think of many other interesting products. You know, and uh, hopefully, you'll work with us. Right, so next, um, you can go to this website to get more info, subscribe to the mailing list, and as soon 
as the service is available, we will inform you. So the link is actually uh, business.myinfo.gov.sg. Okay? Right. Just give a little bit of time. The QR code here is a little bit small. Right. Okay. All right. So uh, the reason why I'm speaking so quickly is also because I want to get to the meet, which is, uh, I mean, it's API days after all. So I'm here to talk about APIs. Right. So uh, how does my info API work? Okay, how, do, how, do, how does it work? We use a combination of OAuth and uh, additional layers of security on, built on top of that, you know, uh, all based on web standards you know, to secure our APIs. So OAuth, um, I don't think anyone is a stranger to OAuth if you are in API days. So anyone has not heard of OAuth before? Hey, AJ. All right, okay. Uh, yeah, one of my friends just trying to, yeah. All right, so uh, OAuth is really very simple. There's a three legal OAuth uh, defines client, resource owner, and the resource server, right? So it's a mixture of, I mean, if you're com uh, familiar with that, we use uh, the authorization code grant where we issue an off code via the browser 302, and then you exchange it for an access token, which we use. Uh, which we generate uh, using the JWT standard, okay? And we also use OIDC for SyncPass auth authentication within our system. We use an API gateway to facade all this so that uh, you, as uh, integrated as a partner, do not need to worry about SyncPass and all that. You just call our APIs and we'll take care of it for you, okay? So simple, all right? So how will we secure our APIs? Uh, those of you who know OAuth will know that OAuth itself, it is not enough. And OAuth is, uh, uh, in the years uh, so far, has a lot of um, news about how it's susceptible to attack, man and middle attack, for example. So how we mitigate those attacks and secure our APIs is we use PKI. So there's two, two things that we do. So first, we do a request signature. So basically, um, at the token call, when, some, when your application is trying to request for an access token, right, we make sure that um, you have to sign your request with your private key, and we will validate that signature on our end. This means that there is a key exchange that happens during the onboarding process, and the onboarding process happens on our NDI API portal, which we have streamlined. Right. So if you've gone through the onboarding process, it's actually pretty simple. Okay. And uh, so this basically, this PKS system makes sure that we know exactly who is calling us. So nobody can masquerade as you, as your application, and try to invoke our APIs. Okay. So that's actually very important. The second part about that is we encrypt our payload. So in addition uh, to having a sign request, having, of course, channel encryption and all that, you know, all that nice stuff. We also encrypt the payload with your public key that we have done the exchange beforehand so that only you, only your application can decrypt the data. So if anybody tries to sniff the packets in between, all they will see is uh, encrypted data and they can't access the data at all. Okay? So, uh, a new feature that we just rolled out is uh, signed and encrypted payload. So, uh, in addition to encrypting our payload and making it secure, we also hear from our customers that our partners that sometimes they are aggregators that need to pass the data as a verified form to a third party. So, when they pass that data to a third party, the third party won't be able to tell, hey, where did this come from? Did it come from you? Do I trust you? Or who can I trust? So what we did was, before we encrypted the payload, we actually signed it with our, public, with our private key. So that anyone who's accessing that signed payload will know that it came from us, the data came from us. It came from a government verified source. If you try to change the payload, the signature will uh, it be invalidated. Right? So this means that you'll be able to you know, get the signed and encrypted payload, 
and then encrypt yourself, pass it to a third party, and they can verify that that data came from a government verified source. Right? So this is also new with our version 3 APIs, which we released last week. Okay, next. So what does this mean? This means that the residents, the, the, the users themselves, the end users, they only share the data once. They don't have to you know, keep coming back to verify the data again because the data came from a verified source, the data has been signed, and it can be verified every step of the way. Okay? Data integrity and the source is verifiable, and we have terms of use governing that. We use uh, JWE for encryption and JWS for the signature. Okay? All right. Uh, one more feature that we just rolled out and I'm mindful of time here, which is uh, QR-only login. So again, we are hearing from many of our partners that, hey, we do road shows all the time, you know, trying to get customers and all that. And it's very strange if I, you know, go to a customer on the streets with my iPad and ask them to log in to SingPass on my iPad. So that's really weird and also terribly insecure. Right, so what we do, what we have done is actually we have enabled a QR-only login such that when uh, certain apps that are registered under this category, a roadshow app, okay, when you integrate with us, the login page will only show the QR code. There will not be any place where the user can enter their SingPass or their password. So what they have to do is flip out their phone, use the SingPass mobile app and scan the QR code, use their thumbprint to authenticate themselves and say, yes, I give my data to this uh, roadshow application and you continue with the rest of the my info user journey as per normal. So this method is a lot more secure. It's applicable for counter services as well as roadshow services. So you can you know, engage customers and let them know that you know, their data is secure, their passwords are secure because you're not asking them to key it in, right? Okay, so I know I've blazed through a lot of my presentation, and uh, I think I have five more minutes. Okay, um, but instead of doing the demo, which I think all of you can, you know, find on the NDI API portal, I'd like to open up this time for questions. So, any questions so far? Anyone? Yes. Sorry. Antu. Right. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, just to get my understanding correct, uh, so if I, as a bank, uh, if it uh, uses the my info to uh, you know uh, to for the account opening. Uh, they don't have to do any separate KYC, is it? Uh, it is a special KYC process that is uh, um, uh, that's allowed by MAS. So if you use my info data, okay, uh, MAS regulations allow you to use my info data to do a straight through uh, KYC process. Okay. Yep. Good. Good. And uh, you said about uh, you, you know you listed some uh, data sets uh, like uh, IRAs and other things. Yes. So uh, from uh, from a user point of view, say uh, I use my info, right? Do I need to do anything uh, uh, separately for me to just share the my uh, the, the IRAs data with the my info, or it just happens automatically? It's already uh, yeah. Like no. Yeah. So you don't have to do anything. That's the beauty of it. Every single one of us, if you have SyncPass you have my info, you have that full set of data, but it's secured in all the various government agencies. It will not be pulled until you give that consent. Yep. Questions? I saw another, yeah. Hi. Uh, you have mentioned some uh, mutual authentication things, and yep. uh, there is an onboarding process for that. Yep. But let's say a partner with just a mobile app and want to integrate with the MyInfo, uh, probably mobile app may not be the right place to store those uh, credentials like private keys and all because that's where you need them to uh, encrypt it and sign it with the private keys. 
So what's your thought process on this? Okay, that's actually a very good question. I'm glad you picked it up. Um, so currently, we have quite a few mobile apps integrated with us. And uh, how we advise uh, the mobile app integrators, the partners, is that uh, you should have a web-based uh, or server-based uh, component to that because we use, again, if you uh, uh, saw the slide on the OAuth tool, we, were we are using code authorization grant flow. So basically, this means that it has to be through the browser. Okay, so, so that, is, uh, that is one current limitation that we are looking to break. And uh, it is actually uh, together with the next few parts of our milestone, uh, of our roadmap that's going to be addressed. So part of it is what you see in SingPass Mobile. And uh, you know, subsequently, we also have other uh, features rolled out. But for now, for now uh, we advise partners to use a web-based uh, component or server-based component uh, for that particular portion. So you can you know, get your exposed APIs to your mobile app. Your mobile app calls your server side. Okay. And then you store your keys yeah. on server. Don't store, please do not store your private keys in your mobile app. <laughs> uh, unless you have yeah. a secure element. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yes. Thank thanks. You. Thanks. Thanks for. Any other questions? Yes. Okay. I would like to uh, learn from you. Okay. Along the journey, you develop the API. So, because you, since you have so many uh, partners, especially those uh, uh, FIs. So, uh, along the journey, what kind of uh, certificate program, certification program, you have went through? To, to, to ensure to all the different partners your, uh, all your authentication is uh, secure enough, at least to meet the industry best practice. Mm. Uh, for example, they have like the FIPS uh, and the uh, common criteria. Yeah, I uh, yep. would like to share. Yeah. Right, that's actually a very technical question, right? So I'm glad you asked it. Um, today, we don't really have a certification process, but uh, that's the advantage of us uh, employing web standards you know, for our APIs. So we very deliberately chose to use web standards and not something that is uh, bespoke or custom on our end so that, you know, anybody who has access to those web standards will be able to integrate with us. So again, the FIPS level and all those stuff, the technical requirements, we actually outlined it very clearly in our portal. So if you go visit our portal, there are some technical requirements that you can go through. And, uh, you know, if you're... Yeah, if you need to more experimentation, there are sandbox APIs that you can play with, and we really provide a lot, a lot of tools to the developers, you know, to uh, be able to integrate with us. In addition to that, we actually helped. Um, I think we have like four or five different uh, workshops that we helped at uh, for various partners already. So we are hoping to do more. And uh, if you uh, stay tuned to uh, the mailing list, if we have a workshop, we can actually inform you about it. Yeah, because uh, surprisingly, because as the bank, we also develop APIs. So uh, some of those uh, certification is being always re uh, requested by the MAS, to at least to show as evidence, including some uh, independent assessment uh, uh, yep. um, reports. But, so that's why we would like to learn the trick. Since you can work with MS with uh, this uh, FI, how you can bypass this kind of validation, yeah. yeah. Yeah, don't tell them I told you, but <laughs> web, web standards, web standards. Uh, okay. okay, thanks. I'll, yes. I'll yeah. uh, I would like to understand about your partner onboarding process. Mm. Uh, is it uh, completely automated uh, via the testing in Sandbox and completely self-serve for partners? Or do you actually have manual checkpoints behind to evaluate the use cases, do the KYC of the partners, and you know, how, how, how does it exactly work? Right, so we divide it into two parts. So the sandbox portion is really for the developers. So we want you to be able to dive in, you know, just play with the APIs, just do what you want, you know, try to play with the APIs, get a comfort level with your app, develop a prototype app even. You know, show it to your bosses. If your bosses are happy with it, then, you know, you start the onboarding process after that. So basically, um, the onboarding process, when you log in, uh, via Corp Pass, you can actually submit a link up request. And when your link up request, again, uh, it is not automated. There is some physical person at the back. Uh, many of them are our policy uh, makers uh, and our business owners. And they will review your 
uh, user journey because as part of the onboarding process, you are required to submit what your user journey looks like. So we will review that, and then uh, based on uh, the review, they will be approved. Once approved, then you get access to our staging environments. Yeah, that's where you, you know, really start to prepare your application for production release. Yep. Okay, so I have a question. So how, how do you govern the uh, the party partners connecting to you yep. so that they don't misuse the data that they get from this API? Okay, so we have quite a few uh, ways. Okay, one of them uh, is, again, there's always the, the policy regulation, right, from all the various industries. MES is a very uh, strong partner and, and you know, uh, industry policy regulation on the banking sector and FIs. So uh, with others, we also you know, work with them. There are certain terms and conditions that you have to agree to when you are you know, signing up for a link-up request. So um, at the back end, we actually do something a little bit more complex to try to detect abuse, try to detect uh, instances where there are you know, cases where um, the partners are not aligned to the agreement. Then we actually take action. So, so in your uh, terms and condition, do you restrict them from storing the data permanently, or do you have uh, some policies to say you can only store like how many days? So, so, so um, there, there are there's PDPC to govern uh, data management, and data storage. Okay, so uh, I won't really go into that, but uh, when you think about it, if somebody comes to your counter and applies for an account, they fill up in the paper form and they submit to you, do you store that data? You have to store that data because they become your customer, right? So data that is required for your business process definitely has to be stored. But again, you know, there are, again, PDPC uh, rules governing how you can store and how long you can store, you know, beyond the, the reasonable use. Right, uh, I am so sorry, I'll just take one Last question, and uh, we are done for the day. Yeah. yeah Thank um, you. Just, uh, just like to find out because at that point of time when you are onboarding and you're taking the snapshot of my info profile, um, what is the frequency of refresh, and what happened if you know due to that split second that change has actually happened? Okay, um, so frequency of refresh uh, differs from data source to data source. Some of the data is uh, federated, so it's immediate. Okay, so, uh, but most of the data source will be at maximum one working day late. So it's pretty updated, so you'll be able to you know, get whatever you need. If uh, there is some change in the services that are, or, or information that you've gotten, from the user, it is a snapshot of that time, and subsequently you can reach out to the customer for an updated uh, set of information. Yep. To answer your question behind that is, no, today we do not push data to you. Yeah. Okay, so uh, thank you all for your time. I'm so sorry. Uh, I promised Sam that I wouldn't eat into his time, so I'm just going to hand the time over to him. And again, uh, once again, thank you so much for having me. And I uh, hope you guys visit the portal. Thank you.